In order to more accurately predict the current potential behavior of the reaction system at the electrochemical interface, it is always important to fully study the rate determining step or the lowest step of the overall electrode process. From lecture 3, we learned that the rate constant of the interfacial electron transfer step can be very small, but due to its great sensitivity to the electrode potential applied, it can become substantially larger if we apply a large overpotential. Meanwhile, from lecture 4, we learned that mass transport is always involved in an electrode process, and in particular, diffusion as one major means of mass transport tends to be very slow, and therefore it's important to learn about this phenomenon. So we will start to first look at the fixed first and second laws, which is the fundamental laws of diffusion, and then based on these two laws, we derive the Cotterill equation to show our prediction on the current potential behavior when the mass transport is the rate determining step. And next, we discuss the concept of nonest diffusion layer, based on which we can define a fundamental parameter for evaluating the rate of diffusion. And last, I will discuss some other ways of mass transports, notably convection, convection and migration. Diffusion of a species always occurs from a point of high concentration to a point of lower one, so the concentration difference is the sole driving force. Fick's first law gives the definition of the diffusion of flux of a species along a linear dimension in a solution as Jx. x is the point in the dimension equals to minus d d is the diffusion coefficient times the partial derivative of concentration with respect to x. The minus sign here means the direction of diffusion of flux is always down the concentration gradient, and this could be better understood with the figure on the left. The diffusion coefficient of a molecular species in an aqueous solution always falls in the region of 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 6 centimeters squared per second. And to physically reflect how far a molecule diffuses per unit time, as they were found to be equal to del x squared divided by 2 del t. It can be converted to x equal to square root of 2 dt, which is the displacement of the molecule in the dimension driven solely by the diffusion. And then we can do a quick estimate to show the slowness of diffusional movement. Assume a molecule has a diffusion coefficient of square centimeter per second. So in one second, it will only move 50 micrometer, which is far shorter than one millimeter, the dimension of a macro electrode. Then we move on to the fixed second law, which gives the consequence of the diffusion. More specifically, the concentration variation over time for a given position. Let's think about the diffusion of a molecule through such a cube-like slab of a solution. The slab has a dimension of a width delta x and literal surface area A. And consider the flux out is Jx and flux in is Jx plus delta x. Then the net flux through the slab, j delta x equals to jx minus jx plus delta x. And for the second term, we use Taylor expansion, which gives us approximation jx plus delta x times the derivative of jx with respect to x. As such, we would have j delta x equals to minus delta x times the derivative of j with respect to x. Then using the fixed first law, we would have the further conversion leading to delta x times d 
times the second derivative of concentration with respect to x. And for j delta x, we actually have a separate definition for itself equals to delta n. n is the amount of the molecule species divided by a times delta t, which can be approximated to the derivative of the amount with respect to time divided by area. Then we do a simple math trick. We divide delta x and then times delta x. So we would have the derivative of concentration with respect to time multiplied by delta x. Combining the latter two equation, we would have the concentration change over time equals to the product of diffusion coefficient and the curvature of concentration change over space. And this is the fixed second law of diffusion. Based on the fundamental laws of diffusion derived, we can now predict the current time response for some diffusion controlled processes. And one classic example is given by Cotterill for the case of potential step chronoamperiometry on a planar macroelectrode. In this case, we apply a potential step to a planar macroelectrode, regardless of the shape of the electrode surface, and as long as the dimensions are in macro scale, which is at least in millimeter, and then we record the current as function of time. The method of chronoamperiometry is further detailed in lecture 6, section 1. The features of this scenario can be expressed by their boundary conditions. When t equals to 0 for all x, c equals to c star, which is about concentration. And this condition simply means before the potential step is applied, the electroactive species is evenly distributed everywhere. And for t bigger than 0, we have when x equals to 0, c also equals to 0. The second condition means once the potential step is applied, the electroactive species at the electrosurface is immediately depleted such that the materials are fully supplied by diffusion from the bulk solution in the very long distance away from the electrical surface. And the latter can be expressed by the third condition, where when x is approaching infinite, the concentration equals to the bulk concentration. Based on these preset conditions, by solving this first second law, we can derive the current equals to an f a times square root of d times the c star divided by square root of pi t. n is the number of electron transfers during the elementary process. f is the Faraday constant, a is the electrode area, d is the diffusion coefficient. C star is the bulk solution of uh, material of interest. Because the derivation of quaternary equation is a bit intricate, so I will not present the whole process of calculation here. Interestingly, we can see here the quaternary equation shows for this diffusion controlled process the current is inversely proportional to the square root of time. And we can actually understand this decrease in trend of diffusion controlled current at a microscopic level. Well, because the diffusion layer keeps expanding over time, the diffusion of flux will be slowed down over time. And so does the magnitude of the current. However, in reality, the diffusion layer will not keep expanding forever. It tends to develop to a finite thickness. And this requires us to understand the concept of noise diffusion layer, which will be described in the next section. The noise diffusion layer model is presented in the figure I show here. This is a plot of concentration profile as a function of distance away from the electrode surface. At the electrode surface, which is x equal to zero, we assume the concentration equals to zero for this diffusion controlled process. 
and as we leave the electrode surface, the concentration keeps increasing linearly until the distance of x equal to delta, where the concentration reaches the bulk state. And please note that such an abrupt transition from the diffusion region to the bulk solution is an important simplification in the concept. The actual transition is much more gradual as depicted in the figure of last section. The basic ideas behind the noise diffusion layer that the diffusion layer stops expansion lies in the significant effects of natural convection, another type of mass transport, which will be soon later discussed in next section. Specifically, an electrode reaction very likely produces a molecular species of different density from the reactant species, and this will induce a convectional mixing of all the molecules present in the solution. Also, the regional temperature variation throughout the solution will contribute to this mixing. Consequently, at some point of x equal to delta, the concentration difference becomes so small and easy to eliminate by the convectional mixing such that a bulk concentration will always be sustained. And the concept of noise diffusion layer is very useful as we will be showing the following. When diffusion layer stops expansion, a steady state diffusion in the layer may operate, which means the concentration change over time throughout the solution will be zero. Then according to fixed second law and the two concentration conditions, we can get the equation for the concentration profile in the diffusion layer as C equals to C plus divided by delta times x, where x bigger than zero, smaller than delta. Then according to a fixed first law, the absolute diffusion of flux would be equal to D times the derivative of concentration with respect to x which further leads to d divided by delta times the bulk concentration. And this result has very similar form to the rate law for the electrode kinetics, such that we can define the diffusional mass transport coefficient mt equals to d divided by delta, which has the same unit of centimeter per second as that of the rate constant for the electrode kinetics k so they can be directly compared to each other. And this dynamic parameter is of great use in the development of photometry theories and will be discussed in more detail in next lecture. In this lecture, we have examined the phenomenon of diffusion, one of the major means of mass transporting a solution. It occurs solely due to the concentration difference and during an electrode reaction, it always happens near the electrode surface. It's also important to look into the other two ways of mass transport, convection and migration. Convection can be further divided to natural convection and forced convection. Natural convection is intrinsic to the process of electrolysis. And as mentioned before, it arises from either a density difference between the electrogenerated species and the existing ones, or the temperature variation over the space that may result from heat transfer during the reaction, or non-ideal thermostatting. Natural convection usually occurs after tens of seconds following the onset of diffusion layer evolution. Forced convection, as its name implies, is due to the artificial control of the fluid motion. In other words, the external force exerted onto the solution system. For example, in some electrochemistry experiments, rotating disk electrodes are used to generate a controlled mass transport rate of the reaction species depending on the rotating speed of the electrode. And in this case, it will happen all the time and basically everywhere in the solution. A third way of mass transport migration, or more precisely electromigration, is also extremely important in the context of an electrode reaction. 
It refers to the migration of a charged species of interest in an electric field that is always present at or near the electrode surface, except at the potential of zero charge, where the electrode exhibits electric neutrality. So this mass transfer always occurs and is at the very near region of the electrode surface. At this time, Dubai length can be used to estimate how far the induced electric field of a charged electrode surface can persist. With the equation, the Dubai length equals to 1 over square root of 8 pi times lambda b, which is the Durham length of a medium, which for water is 7 Armstrong, then times the Avogadro constant and 1000 and times the ionic strength of the electrolyte such that we can see if the ionic strength of this solution increase then the dubilance will decrease then for a solution containing only a monovalent electrolyte if the concentration increases from 1 millimolar to 0 0.1 molar Theoretically, the dubilance will decrease from 100 Armstrong to 10 Armstrong. Therefore, we can see adding more electrolyte into the solution can effectively screen the electrostatic interaction between the electrosurface and the charged species. And this can eliminate the migration except very close to the electrosurface such that we can ensure diffusion is the only mean of mass transport. And meanwhile, to confine the electron transfer within the electron tunneling distance of 10 to 20 Armstrong. So this is also one major reason why we need to add an excess amount of supporting electrolyte of 0.1 molar.